I recently wrote an article called Jiu-Jitsu Knee Care, Save the Penetration Step for Later. And it's for you jiu-jitsu athletes out there who are just starting to learn wrestling. You should ignore the penetration step. That's what this article is about. And for those who don't know what the penetration step is, here's a quick video. It's this long step that's used to get to a takedown, get to the legs in wrestling. And it's especially effective against people who have really low stances. So the reason why you should ignore it, at least for your first few wrestling classes, is because your focus should be on learning simple and effective takedowns that give you confidence in your stand-up game and not a skill that's hard on your knees and tough to execute. So don't just take this from me. Here's what a few people have said on some of my YouTube videos. I'm almost 40 and have just never felt comfortable going to the knee. This will be very helpful. Thank you. This is exactly what I need. I'm 6'5", 36 years old, with bad knees and a questionable lower back. LOL. Thank you. I developed chronic toe pain from trying to learn the penetration step. And it does not have to be this way. There are a lot of takedowns you can learn without it. Namely, the snatch single, ankle picks, knee picks, throw buys, slide buys, the Russian tie series, a.k.a. the two-on-one, and then the sprawl, and then snap down go, go behinds. So that's just to name a few. And this realization really came while coaching at Theory Jiu-Jitsu Studio in Appleton, Wisconsin. So I walked in there about a little over a year ago, I think. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, okay, they want to start a wrestling class. I can probably just show them the same simple stuff we teach wrestlers from the very beginning. And we usually teach young wrestlers the penetration step right from the start. And it makes sense because wrestlers are mostly young, so college age or, or younger. Uh, they have good knees, and they have low stances. So, you know, when you're young, your brain's like a sponge. You soak up every new movement that you're trying, and especially if you're enjoying it. You have good knees because there's just less wear, wear and tear and injuries. And then wrestlers have low stances, so you're going to use a tool like the penetration step to help you get by that, change levels, and get to your takedowns. Or on the flip side, jujitsu has a lot of older people, so just college grads or older. Um, there is a trend of younger kids starting now and, and starting to make it, you know, like a lifelong sport, like the Rotolo brothers. Uh, you know, jujitsu athletes, a lot of their knees ache, as you heard in those comments above from the YouTube video. And then their stance is almost non-existent in jujitsu, so they're standing tall, <laughs> almost inviting takedowns. So... With all of that being said, what we teach wrestlers from the start is not exactly what we should be teaching jiu-jitsu athletes from the start. And when I realized this, I'm like, you know what? What's some other simple stuff that gives you the most bang for your buck? And I only started thinking about that because someone in the class was like, hey, what technique gives you the most bang for your buck in jiu-jitsu that wrestlers use that we can use? And that got me thinking. The sprawl and go behind is the number one takedown in wrestling and if it's not number one I could I could be wrong on that then it's top three because a lot of people have bad shots and try to get to your legs with you know head down and all that sort of stuff and bad technique and we punish them with the sprawl and then a quick go behind or a sprawl right to their legs which is a sprawl reattack. so I started just teaching sprawls and go behinds because it's also an easy way if you have a, a wrestler someone who has experience, and they shoot on you, if you get a good sprawl, you can stuff that right away. And wrestling is a little less effective from that sprawl position, front headlock position, because they have to respect the choke. So if you get a good sprawl, even if a wrestler shoots on you, and you have good head and arm game or front headlock game from there, you can start to punish them immediately. Whereas in a wrestling match, there's a lot of options there because there's not an expectation of a choke attempt. So... Sprawl and go-behinds are awesome. People pick that up really quickly. But I also am offensive-minded, so I didn't want them to just be on defense. I wanted them to have simple offensive attacks. So from there, I started teaching hand fighting and snatch singles. And people were eating it up. It was simple, intuitive, and easy to learn. So people were picking easy hand fighting, like inside ties, collar tie pulls, and snatch singles, they were learning it in like a day. And then we worked on perfecting it, 
and getting everyone really comfortable with it for two months. And then you start seeing it in the room everywhere. Everyone's starting standing. Amazing thing to see. And we even had a guy a few weeks ago hit a snatch single in a match in competition, take the guy down, and then sub him. So almost brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> um, so awesome stuff to see. I know it sounds crazy, but it's really not. If you keep it simple, people can do it, get early, easy Ws and wins, and then they gain more confidence, and then they want to eventually learn stuff like the penetration step and increase their game and improve their game. So from the snatch single, we move on to more kneeless techniques that don't involve the penetration step, and the rest is history. People are loving wrestling and eating it up. So again, I'm not saying you should never do the penetration step. Just keep in mind that it's rough on the knees. It can be really hard and unnatural to learn from the, from the start, and that ultimately just does not instill confidence in newcomers to wrestling. So I say wait till you're a little more confident in your stand-up game by learning some hand fighting, snatch singles, uh, standing double legs, so like blast doubles are good too, and sprawls and go-behinds. And then there's also a lot more that I recommend teaching too once people get down the basics, and I'll have my next article cover that. So if you want to start learning takedowns without the penetration step, check out my video on YouTube called Low Risk Takedowns Without Hitting Your Knees. It covers all sorts of techniques and takedowns here that will help you get started. And then if you do want something that's a little more in-depth, check out my instructional no penetration step, no problem, Low Risk Takedowns Without Hitting Your Knees. Uh, if we go check that out real quick, it is $20.00. You're able to download the video if you want to just keep it forever, share it with friends and stuff, uh, or you can just watch it. And it has all sorts of takedowns, techniques, finishes, everything you could dream of, everything I've described to really get you started and get you solid with the basics on offense. And eventually I'll have one on defense too. So there's that if you guys want that help. Otherwise, if you don't need that and you're like, my wrestling's okay, and I'm cool with where I'm at, but my knees still freaking hurt. I've been doing uh, ATGs programs and exercises for the last couple of years, um, and what they do is they're big on just strengthening your muscles in longer ranges, so basically gaining mobility and gaining strength in weird positions that we put ourselves in in jiu-jitsu, and because of them, I can now do 16 pistol squats on each leg, and my knees feel amazing. And that's just like one of the, the cool bonuses. Um, but ATG is awesome. They have a beginner ATG lifting routine. Uh, this is one of the first videos I watched when I first discovered them. And I really like this because they walk you through their whole philosophy and a lot of the exercises they use to really bulletproof the body. And not just the knees, like your shoulders, your back, your neck, your ankles, your tibialis, all that stuff. So... I really like this, highly recommend this video. And they actually on their app have a program called Untapped that is specifically for jiu-jitsu practitioners. So it's literally a lifting program with six days of work to help you get stronger for jiu-jitsu. So I really like it. Uh, it's on their app here. And the app is $24.75 uh, a month for the first month if you use this code. But then it moves up to $49.50 which is definitely a bit pricey. So I recommend if this is pricey for you, just get the first month, go to the untapped program in the app, look at all the exercises that are really beneficial for you, take those, add those into your game or into your program, your lifting program. Or if you just don't have a lifting program and you just want to do those exercises, that would be awesome too. So just do that, cancel your subscription, save some money. And then if you do get the app and you want to support me, you can go to this article, which I'll put the link in the description below, and then just click on this, and this will uh, help me earn some commission. So that's it, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, if you do want to get these articles in your inbox, you can just go to www.jordanlaster.com. If you go up to the top, you can hit join, and then you'll start getting my articles in your inbox. I'm going to be writing a lot more now uh, on all sorts of interesting ideas, topics, teaching wrestling, you name it. 
for jujitsu and also on some health stuff. So I also have this page called Fuel, where ATG is not the only thing I do to help improve my performance in jujitsu. I also have all sorts of nutritional stuff I do, stuff for my skin just to make sure I don't get any skin funk and to make sure my, my skin stays hydrated, nice and clean. And then other things like blocking out blue light. And eventually I'll add more um, resources here too if you want to learn more about health. And uh, things that are important for staying healthy, staying injury-free, and just feeling good.